Every night, when we go to sleep, where do we go, and what really happens? Some people may see horrible nightmares, beautiful dreams, or the feeling of being stuck in their own skin, trapped by sleep paralysis. This is what we will be covering in today's video, sleep and dreams, as you might have guessed already by the title, of course. And if you don't know how an iceberg chart works, well, it starts with well-known things and common things such as a casual dream, which you have almost every night, and towards the bottom, it will cover unknown and more disturbing things such as being trapped in your own mind. But anyways, I'm excited to get into it. So let's kick it off with the sleep and dreams iceberg. And actually, before we get into the video, consider subscribing to the channel. We are almost to 100,000 subscribers, and it'd be really awesome if you joined the community and helped us reach that goal. It's free to subscribe, and you can always change your mind. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the video. Tier 1. Casual Dreaming Casual dreaming refers to the act of engaging in daydreaming or fantasizing during waking hours. Unlike the vivid and often uncontrollable nature of dreams during sleep, casual dreaming involves the intentional or spontaneous imagination and mental exploration while awake, such as when you're really bored or at school or work or something like that and your mind just wanders and you can find yourself lost in thoughts, scenarios, or possibilities. Casual dreaming can be a creative and enjoyable activity, allowing your mind to wander into realms of different imagination and fantasy. It can be a source of inspiration, problem solving, or simply a way to escape momentarily from the demands of reality. People often engage in casual dreaming during moments of relaxation, boredom, or when seeking a mental break from routine tasks. This type of dreaming can take various forms, such as envisioning future goals, imagining different outcomes to situations, or just creating entirely fictional scenarios in your mind. It's a natural and common aspect of human cognition, and it can contribute to cognitive flexibility and creativity. Sleepwalking Sleepwalking is a sleep disorder characterized by walking or performing other complex behaviors while still being in a state of partial awakeness during non-REM sleep. It is more common in children than in adults but can still occur at any age. People who sleepwalk may engage in various different activities such as walking around the house, opening and closing doors, rearranging furniture, or even leaving the house. Despite appearing awake, sleepwalkers are not conscious of their actions at all. Episodes usually occur during the first half of the night during deep sleep stages, lasting for a few minutes to half an hour or more. Sleepwalkers typically have little to no memory of the event, and if awakened during an episode, they may feel pretty confused or disoriented. Sleepwalking can be triggered by factors such as sleep deprivation, fever, certain different medications, stress, and alcohol consumption. Genetics may also play a role in predisposing someone to sleepwalking. In many cases, sleepwalking doesn't require specific treatment, especially in episodes are infrequent and not causing significant distress or any sort of harm. However, if safety concerns arise or if the sleepwalking is frequent and problematic, a healthcare professional may recommend addressing underlying issues such as improving sleep hygiene or managing stress. Sleepwalking can actually pose some safety risks to you, as individuals may be unaware of potential dangers in their environment. Precautions such as securing doors and windows and removing obstacles from the sleepwalker's path may be necessary. In some cases, a sleep study may be conducted to monitor brain activity, eye movement, and other psychological parameters during sleep to help diagnose this and understand the nature of your specific sleepwalking episodes. It's important to note that sleepwalking can sometimes be a symptom of an underlying sleep disorder or other more serious medical condition. But overall, sleepwalking is just, you know, walking around in your sleep like I just described in really deep detail. NREM sleep or just REM sleep, I don't know, but non-REM sleep is a vital component of the sleep cycle. Completing the REM rapid eye movement stage of sleep in this sleep phase consists of three distinct stages, N1, N2, and N3. N1, the initial stage, marks the transition from wakefulness to sleep, just by, you know, going straight to sleep right as you fall asleep, characterized by light sleep and occasional hypnic jerks. 
and 2 follows, featuring sleep spindles and K complexes on EEG recordings, contributing to a deeper but still relatively light sleep. N3, the final stage of your sleep, and it is the deepest part of the NREM sleep, known as the slow wave sleep. During N3, vital psychological functions slow down and growth hormone is released. That's why you, you know, grow or heal during your sleep, supporting physical restoration and growth. The sleep cycle progresses through these NREM stages before transitioning to just REM sleep, and this cycle repeats throughout the night. Each sleep cycle, lasting approximately 90 to 110 minutes, contributes to the overall quality of sleep. NREM sleep is essential for various psychological processes, including memory consolidation, immune function, and overall well-being. So sleep is just obviously important, and it's important to get through all of these stages of sleep at least once, but most of all, twice. Melatonin supplements, readily available over the counter, are commonly used to regulate sleep patterns and put you to sleep. The hormone melatonin, naturally produced by the pineal gland in the brain, plays a pivotal role in signaling the body to prepare for sleep as darkness falls. Individuals with sleep disorders, those adjusting to new sleep schedules due to shift work or experiencing jet lag, may turn to melatonin supplements for assistance to fall asleep. Dosage and timing are crucial considerations when using melatonin supplements. Starting with a low dose, about 30 minutes to an hour before bedtime is generally recommended. Higher doses may not necessarily enhance the effectiveness and could lead to side effects. Melatonin efficiently varies among the individuals, and its use should be guided by a healthcare professional, especially when underlying health conditions or concerns are present. But overall, melatonin supplements are just to help you go to sleep. Regular Wake Cycle Maintaining a regular wake cycle, also known as a consistent sleep-wake schedule or circadian rhythm, is essential for overall health and well-being. A regular wake cycle involves going to bed and waking up at the same time each day, even on the weekends. And this is the body's internal clock, or the circadian rhythm, which regulates the sleep-wake cycle. Consistency in sleep and wake times help synchronize this internal clock, promoting better sleep quality and overall health. Tier 2, and I'm not sure why this one wasn't on the first tier, but it's whatever. But REM sleep, or rapid eye movement, or just REM, like I said, REM, sleep is a crucial stage in the sleep cycle, characterized by distinct psychological and neurological features. It is one of the four stages of sleep, alternating with the three stages of non-REM sleep throughout the night. During REM sleep, the brain becomes highly active, resembling the level of activity observed during wakefulness. So your mind is as active as it is during the day when you're sleeping during this REM sleep. This heightened neural activity is, uh, is accompanied by vivid and immersive dreaming experiences. Despite the increased brain activity, REM sleep is also associated with temporary muscle paralysis, known as atonia, which prevents individuals from physically acting out their dreams so you wouldn't get hurt. It's kind of like the brain's way of preventing you from hurting yourself while you're sleeping. REM sleep typically occurs in cycles, roughly every 90 to 110 minutes, with the duration of each REM period extending as the night progresses. These cycles are integral to the overall sleep architecture and contribute to the restoration and maintenance of various psychological functions. Psychological changes during REM sleep include increased heart rate, irregular breathing, and fluctuations in blood pressure. So it's almost as your you know, acting this out inside of your dream, and it kind of really makes a toll on your health in some sort of way. It's kind of weird. These changes, along with the vivid dreams, are believed to play a role in emotional processing and memory consolidation. REM sleep is particularly associated with the consolidation of procedural and emotional memories, contributing to the learning and the integration of experiences. So these ways of dreams and your dreams are kind of a way of your brain remembering stuff. So, kind of weird. In this sleep cycle, REM sleep is preceded by non-REM sleep stages, which we talked about earlier, and the transition between these stages in a dynamic process. Adequate and balanced REM sleep is essential for overall sleep quality, emotional well-being, and cognitive function, and cognitive health. 
Lucid Dreaming Lucid dreaming is a unique state of consciousness where the dreamer becomes aware that they are in a dream. This heightened self-awareness allows individuals to have varying degrees of control over the dream environment and their narrative. A key feature that distinguishes lucid dreaming from just regular dreaming is the vividness and realism of sensory experiences in a lucid dream can be striking with sights, sounds, and sensations feeling as authentic as those in waking life. Lucid dreams can occur spontaneously, but some people actively practice techniques to induce and enhance this state, allowing them to promote this in their mind and get this over and over again almost every night. These techniques often involve reality checks, keeping dream journals to increase dream recall, and engaging in mental exercises aimed at promoting self-awareness both during waking hours and within the dream state. Some individuals harness the potential of lucid dreaming for creative exploration, problem solving, and personal pleasure. Research suggests that lucid dreaming is associated with increased activity in specific areas of the brain, including the prefrontal cortex, which is linked to decision making and self-awareness. While lucid dreaming is a natural phenomenon that many people experience at least once in their life, the scientific understanding of its underlying mechanisms and potential applications is still evolving and still being studied. Nightmares Nightmares, vivid and distressing dreams that evoke intense negative emotions or are just, you know, terrifying. These unsettling dreams often involve threatening or terrifying scenarios, such as the feeling of being chased, falling, or experiencing some sort of harm. While nightmares are a normal occurrence in the brain, recurrent or severe instances can significantly impact sleep quality and overall well-being and psychological function. Various factors can contribute to the occurrence of nightmares, including stress, anxiety, trauma, medications, sleep deprivation, and certain medical conditions. Individuals with PTSD are particularly prone to experiencing recurrent nightmares. Nightmares may disrupt normal sleep patterns, leading to frequent awakening during the night and creating the reluctance to sleep. Nightmares should be distinguished from night terrors, a separate sleep disorder characterized by sudden, intense fear and temporary inability to fully awaken with night terrors being more common in children. Treatment for nightmares often involves addressing the underlying causes, trauma-focused therapy, sleep hygiene practices, stress reduction techniques, and in some cases, medications may all be recommended to help get rid of nightmares. Sleep deprivation. Sleep deprivation, the condition where an individual doesn't obtain sufficient sleep, can arise from various different factors, such as lifestyle choices, demanding work schedules, shift work, sleep disorders, medical conditions, and stress are all common contributors. The impact of sleep deprivation extends beyond mere tiredness, profoundly affecting cognitive function. Memory, concentration, decision making, and reaction time may all be impaired, leading to diminished overall mental acuity. Mood disturbances, including irritability and mood swings, often accompany this sleep deprivation. The repercussions of insufficient sleep aren't limited to cognitive aspects. It significantly influences physical health. Chronic sleep deprivation is also associated with an elevated risk of obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, and a compromised immune system. Moreover, the increased risk of accidents and injuries underscores the importance of addressing sleep deficits. Emotional well-being is intrinsically linked to sleep as well, and if chronic sleep deprivation can contribute to heightened emotional reactivity, stress, and susceptibility to mood disorders such as depression and anxiety. Physical appearance can also be affected by inadequate sleep. Dark circles underneath the eyes, puffy eyes, and a fatigued appearance are common manifestations. Additionally, premature aging may also be accelerated. So if you don't get sufficient sleep, you'll actually start to age quicker. In extreme cases, individuals experiencing chronic sleep deprivation may enter microsleeps, brief involuntary episodes of sleep that can occur even during activities requiring attention which can be a major problem because people who are very, very sleep deprived, they will just start to have the micro sleeps while such thing as driving and, you know, 
sleeping while driving isn't the best scenario. And also the performance impairment resulting from sleep deprivation is particularly concerning in safety sensitive industries like healthcare and transportation. Establishing good sleep hygiene practices, addressing the underlying sleep disorders, and adopting a consistent sleep schedule are crucial steps in mitigating the adverse effects of any sort of sleep deprivation. Jet lag. Jet lag is a temporary sleep disorder that arises when an individual's internal body clock becomes misaligned with the time zone of their current location due to rapid long distance air travels across multiple time zones. Symptoms include fatigue, insomnia, irritability, and digestive issues, all just kind of really related to being sleepy. The severity and duration of jet lag depend on factors such as the number of time zones crossed, the direction of travel, individual resilience, and pre-existing sleep patterns. Prevention and management strategies involve gradually adjusting sleep and meal times before travel, staying hydrated, exposing oneself to natural light, and adopting the local schedule quickly upon arrival. Traveling eastward often results in more pronounced jet lag than westward travel due to the body finding it easier to delay its internal clock than to advance it. Long haul flights are typically more associated with jet lag than short haul flights that don't cross as many time zones, pretty obvious though. Individual variability plays a role in susceptibility to jet lag with factors such as age, overall health, and circadian preferences influencing how quickly someone adjusts to another time zone and how tired they will be and how tired they are when the jet lag happens. Afterlife dreams. Afterlife dreams, often referred to as death-related dreams or dreams of deceased loved ones, are experiences where individuals dream about people who have passed away recently. These dreams will frequently involve vivid and emotionally charged interactions with the deceased person or persons, such as conversations, receiving messages, or feeling a strong presence of the deceased loved one or deceased person. The themes and content of afterlife dreams can vary widely among all individuals, encompassing comforting and peaceful encounters to more challenging or distressing experiences. The interpretation of afterlife dreams is often shaped by personal beliefs, cultural influences, and all religious backgrounds, which can all play a role in how you perceive it in your dreams and how you see the loved one. In some cultures, these dreams are considered a form of communication of a means of spirit to convey messages from beyond. For many individuals, afterlife dreams are viewed as meaningful or symbolic experiences, providing a sense of comfort, closure, or reassurance. Psychologically, afterlife dreams are often seen as a natural response to grief. Dreaming about a deceased loved one can be part of the grieving process, allowing individuals to process emotions, their memories, and unresolved feelings associated with the loss. From a psychological standpoint, these dreams may serve as a way for the mind to navigate the complex emotions tied to the departure of a loved one. Afterlife dreams can also be seen through the lens of maintaining a continuing bond with the deceased. Some individuals find that these dreams allow for a sense of ongoing connection and relationship, contributing to a feeling of ongoing presence even after death. Ultimately, the interpretation of afterlife dreams is highly personal and hard to just widely do. While some may find solace and meaning in these dreams, others may view them as a random occurrence with no particular significance. Approaching all of these experiences with sensitivity and recognizing the diverse ways individuals interpret and respond to afterlife dreams is crucial, considering the unique and personal nature of the grieving process. Narcolepsy Narcolepsy is a chronic neurological disorder that has symptoms affecting sleep and your wakefulness. One hallmark of narcolepsy is excessive daytime sleepiness, where individuals experience persistent and overwhelming drowsiness during waking hours or just during the day, irrespective of nighttime sleep duration. So no matter how much you sleep, you'll still be tired. This can significantly impact daily activities and overall functioning and well-being. A defining feature of narcolepsy is the occurrence of sleep attacks, abrupt and uncontrollable episodes of just falling asleep. These episodes lasting from a few seconds to a few minutes can happen during routine activities and may pose relatively serious safety risks. Cataplexy, another characteristic symptom, involves sudden muscle weakness or paralysis triggered by strong emotions. 
sleep paralysis, a temporary inability to move or speak during the transition between wakefulness and sleep, and vivid hallucinations add up to the complex clinical picture of such narcolepsy. Disturbances in nighttime sleep are common among individuals with narcolepsy. Despite experiencing EDS, maintaining restorative sleep can be very challenging for the person with narcolepsy, with frequent awakening during the night. The exact cause of narcolepsy is not fully understood at all, but is associated with a deficiency of hypocrine, a neurotransmitter linked to wakefulness. The deficiency is believed to result from the autoimmune process targeting the cells producing hypocrine. Management of narcolepsy involves a multifaceted approach. Medications as such, including stimulants to address EDS and antidepressants or other drugs to manage cataplexy and other symptoms along with narcolepsy, are commonly prescribed. Lifestyle adjustments as well, such as adhering to a regular sleep schedule and incorporating short naps, are also recommended to enhance your overall well-being. Sleep Apnea Sleep apnea, a prevalent sleep disorder, manifests through repeated interruptions in breathing during sleep. The two main types are obstructive sleep apnea, or OSA, and central sleep apnea, or CSA. OSA occurs when throat muscles excessively relax, causing a partial or complete blockage of the upper airway, often accompanied by loud snoring. CSA, less common, results from a failure of the brain to signal the muscles responsible for breathing. So you really just start breathing when you're sleeping, which obviously is a pretty big problem. Both types lead to disruptions in sleep, affecting overall health and your well-being. Common indicators of sleep apnea include loud snoring, frequent awakening throughout the night, and daytime symptoms such as excessive sleepiness, persistent fatigue, and impaired concentration. If left untreated, sleep apnea can contribute to various health issues including hypertension, cardiovascular disease, and diabetes. Treatment options for sleep apnea depend on the type and the severity. Lifestyle modifications such as weight loss and positional therapy may be all recommended. Falling in void dreams. Dreams of falling into abyss or a void are common and intriguing phenomenon with potential symbolic meanings. Psychologically, falling dreams are often interpreted as reflections of a sense of loss of control, anxiety, or insecurity in your life. The void in these dreams may represent the unknown or the aspects of life that feel overwhelming or uncertain. The emotional impact of falling dreams is notable, often eliciting fear, anxiety, and a feeling of powerlessness that can linger upon awaking. These dreams may be connected to various stressors or challenges in the dreamer's life or your life, for example, reflecting fears of failure, being overwhelmed, or uncertainties about the future. The personalized nature of dream symbolism emphasizes the importance of considering the dreamer, unique experiences, and emotions. Falling dreams can serve as a psychological mirror, reflecting and processing the dream's current state of mind, but for some individuals, falling dreams may just offer a sense of lucidity or awareness during the dream, and some may have some sort of meaning in your real life, or, you know, it could just be a dream that you're falling. Irregular Wake Cycle An irregular wake cycle, characterized by disrupted or inconsistent patterns of waking and sleeping, can all result from various factors with implications for overall well-being. Shift work is a common contributor, as individuals engaged in irregular work hours may struggle to establish a stable sleep routine, challenging their body's natural circadian rhythm. Social jet lag arising from irregular social activities or commitments can similarly lead to misalignment between internal and the external time, affecting your sleep consistency. The pervasive use of electronic devices, particularly before bedtime, presents another challenge to your regular wake cycle. Exposure to screens suppresses melatonin production, hindering the body's ability to transition into restful sleep. So for example, if you're, you know, just watching a video or just scrolling through TikTok or something like that before bed, you won't actually get as much restful sleep as if you were to just leave your phone, wait an hour, and then go to bed. Because your body just can't, even though you do fall asleep, you're not going to sleep fully restful. Poor sleep hygiene practices are another thing 
including irregular bedtimes and inconsistent sleep routines, all contribute to the disruption of sleep-wake patterns. Stress and anxiety prevalent in modern lifestyles can significantly impact sleep once again, leading to irregular wake cycles, but overall, wake cycles are very important to have a consistent one, and irregular ones can make you feel you know, tired and other things like that. Insomnia. Insomnia, a common sleep disorder, is marked by persistent difficulties in just, you know, falling asleep, staying asleep, or achieving restorative sleep despite having the opportunity to do so. So no matter what, if you're put with a perfect dark room in a comfy bed, you won't be able to fall asleep because of insomnia. It encompasses both primary insomnia, not directly linked to other health conditions, and secondary insomnia, which is associated with factors like medical issues, medications, or psychological disorders. Symptoms of insomnia include trouble initiating sleep, frequent awakenings during the night, early morning awakenings, and waking up feeling unrefreshed. The condition is characterized by into acute, often triggered by specific sensors, and chronic, lasting for three months or more and requiring more comprehensive management. Various factors all contribute to insomnia, including stress, anxiety, depression, disruptions in the sleep environment, changes in your work schedules, and medical conditions. The impact extends beyond just the night, affecting your daytime functioning with symptoms like fatigue, difficulty concentrating, and mood disturbances. All of the symptoms that go along with, you know, just being tired. Long-term insomnia can contribute to increased risk of cardiovascular issues, obesity, and mental health disorders. Treatment approaches in for insomnia encompass behavioral strategies and, in some cases, medications. Cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia is a well-established method addressing behavioral and cognitive factors. Medications, though available, are generally recommended for short-term use due to the potential side effects and dependency concerns. Tier 3. Sleep talking, or soliloquy, is a common sleep disorder characterized by verbal utterances during sleep, often ranging from, you know, simple sounds to coherent sentences just being spoken at random during the night. It can occur during any stage of sleep, but is typically associated with lighter non-REM sleep stages. The content of sleep talking varies widely and may just include random words, phrases, or even complete sentences. The causes of sleep talking are not fully understood, but are believed to be related to increased brain activity during the transition between sleep stages. While sleep talking is generally harmless and doesn't require any sort of specific treatment, its occurrence may be influenced by factors such as stress, fever, sleep deprivation, or medications. Addressing underlying causes such as managing stress or improving sleep hygiene may help reduce the frequency of sleep talking. But sleep talking isn't really a big deal anyways, so you shouldn't be worried if you sleep talk or somebody knows sleep talking, but it's just kind of a weird thing that happens when you're sleeping. Parasomnias, and this is kind of just a different word for sleepwalking, and the definition for it is a person with parasomnias may seem to be alert, walking, or talking, or eating, or doing other such activities, but without awareness because the brain is only partially awake. So it's just kind of a more almost intense version of sleepwalking, because you can also talk and eat, but you're still unconscious, so kind of weird. Dreams about Minecraft. Yeah, I don't really know how to cover this one because there's nothing really online or anywhere saying anything specific about dreams about Minecraft, but basically people have been heard to have had dreams about Minecraft or in Minecraft because sometimes when you play a video game so much, your brain will just kind of pick up on that during the nighttime and you'll just dream it like you're kind of living in it and also playing the video game i don't know that's my analogy of it but i don't know leave a comment down below if you know what uh dreams about minecraft means in any more specific sense somniphobia or sleep dread is a specific phobia characterized by an overwhelming fear of falling asleep or going to bed 
individuals with somniphobia may experience a range of symptoms, including heightened anxiety, panic attacks, sweating, trembling, and an overall dread of what might occur during sleep. Traumatic experiences during sleep, recurring nightmares, or general anxiety disorder can all contribute to the development of somniphobia. The fear of sleep often leads to irregular sleep patterns, insomnia, and sleep deprivation as individuals with somniphobia may be reluctant to initiate the sleep process due to their fear, and this is obviously very bad for your health because you end up sleeping very minimally. Freddy Kruger dreams and this one is kind of also interesting because I'm not sure how to really cover it whether you're dreaming about Freddy Krueger or the actual premise of the movie Nightmare on Elm Street so I'll just go briefly over both. Nightmare on Elm Street, the film series, can be particularly intense and unsettling due to the horror genre associated with the character Freddy Krueger. In these dreams, individuals may experience vivid and frightening scenarios, mirroring the suspenseful nature of the movies. The very essence of Freddy Krueger is to haunt and harm people within the dream world, creating a sense of vulnerability and fear that extends beyond the screen possibly into your own life if you were very scared of the movie. Rett Syndrome Rett Syndrome is a rare and severe genetic neurological disorder that predominantly affects females, occurring in about 1 in 10,000 to 15,000 live female births. It is characterized by a distinct pattern of development a period of normal growth and development during the first six months of life, followed by a sudden regression in acquired skills. This regression includes the loss of purposes, hand skills, social engagement, and language abilities, marking the onset of the disorder. The majority of Rett syndrome cases are caused by mutations in the MECP2 gene located on the X chromosome. While most cases are sporadic, meaning they occur randomly, some may be inherited. And other than that, I'm really not sure why this was on the sleep and dream iceberg because, you know, this is not really associated with sleeping or dreaming at all. And it's just kind of a weird diagnosis and syndrome that happens and you just lose a lot of motor functions in your body. Mirror dreams. Dreams featuring mirrors often delve into the symbolic realm, providing a canvas of sorts for self-reflection and introspection. When a dreamer encounters a mirror, it can represent a subconscious desire for self-awareness and exploration. The clarity or distortion of the reflection may mirror the dreamer's perception of themselves, offering insights into their own self-image and identity. Identity and self-image are pretty common themes in mirror dreams and dreams in general, where the condition of the mirror or the appearance of the reflection becomes a symbolic reflection of how the dreamer sees themselves or wishes to be seen by others. Out-of-body experiences are a subjective phenomenon where individuals perceive themselves as being outside their physical bodies. These experiences are highly subjective and can manifest in various different ways, such as floating, flying, or observing one's own body from a different vantage point. And this can happen during certain dreams of yourself and you'll have a dream while you're sleeping that you see yourself or it's an out-of-body experience. Pretty trippy. The occurrence of OBEs can be spontaneous or triggered by factors like near death experiences, sleep paralysis, meditation, trauma, or the use of psychedelic substances. Some individuals intentionally induce OBEs through practices associated with lucid dreaming. Culturally and historically, OBEs have been reported across different societies and belief systems, showing that this has been happening for a while and all around the world. Interpretations of OBEs can vary based on different cultural beliefs and religious frameworks from around the world, with some associating them with concepts like astral projection. From a scientific perspective, OBEs are often linked to alterations in brain function. Researchers propose that disruptions in the integration of sensory information, changes in body perception, or neurochemical fluctuations in the brain may all contribute to this weird phenomenon of out-of-body experiences. And I've always found this 
kind of out of the body experience very interesting and me personally have never experienced an out of body experience but i'd be interested to hear if any of you guys down below and comment it down below your sort of out of body experience because i can't even like begin to imagine what that would be like and it's it's just interesting so share your stories down below tier four sleep paralysis Sleep paralysis is a phenomenon characterized by a temporary inability to move voluntary muscles during the transitional phases of sleep and wakefulness. This peculiar state occurs as individuals are either falling asleep or waking up. So it's obviously just right at the beginning and end of sleep. A defining feature is the conscious awareness that accompanies the muscle immobility, leaving individuals fully awake mentally while temporarily paralyzed physically, so this can be pretty scary when it happens. During episodes of sleep paralysis, individuals often report vivid hallucinations, which can include a perceived presence in the room, pressure on the chest, or auditory hallucinations pretty crazy. These hallucinations, though not universal, contribute to the unsettling nature of the experience. The duration of sleep paralysis episodes is typically usually brief, ranging from a few seconds to a couple minutes, with normal muscle control returning upon fully waking up or fully falling asleep. Several factors can contribute to the occurrence of sleep paralysis, including irregular sleep patterns, sleep deprivation, or changes in your sleep schedule. While sleep paralysis is often associated with other sleep disorders, such as narcolepsy, it can also manifest just independently and randomly. Cultural interpretations of sleep paralysis vary, with some societies attributing the experience to supernatural entities or malevolent spirits. This cultural context can include and influence the perception of a threatening presence during the episodes. Alien Abduction Dreams Alien abduction dreams represent a subset of vivid and often unsettling dream experiences where individuals believe they have been taken by extraterrestrial beings. These dreams are characterized by their vividness and an overwhelming sense of realism. Recurring elements in these dreams include encounters with beings often described as grays with distinctive features, bright lights, and a feeling of paralysis. The dreamers commonly report a sense of helplessness during the experience, manifesting itself as an inability to move, speak, or resist the actions of the extraterrestrial beings. So this isn't a very, you know, happy dream. The emotional tone of alien abduction dreams is marked by intense fear and anxiety. The unfamiliar and potentially threatening nature of the scenario contributes to the distressing feelings associated with these dreams. So, kind of weird. Night terrors or sleep terrors are a type of parasomnia characterized by sudden and intense episodes of fear, screaming, and apparent panic during non-REM sleep. Typically beginning in childhood, these episodes can persist into adulthood, occurring within the first few hours of falling asleep. Lasting only a few minutes, a person experiencing a night terror may exhibit behaviors such as sitting up in bed, screaming, or thrashing around, all while appearing unresponsive to attempts at comfort. One distinctive feature is the lack of recall upon waking with individuals often having zero to no memory of the intense emotions or actions during the episode that happened. Unlike nightmares, night terrors are not associated with any sort of dream, making them less amenable to traditional dream analysis. They can be triggered by factors such as sleep deprivation, stress, fever, or certain medications, and their frequency can vary from infrequent to multiple times a night. Sandman. The term Sandman is often associated with folklore and popular culture as a mythical character who is said to bring sleep to children by sprinkling sand or dust over their eyes, inducing a state of drowsiness and of course sleep. False awakening is a fascinating and kind of weird and scary phenomenon where individuals dream about waking up only to later realize that they were still within a dream. 
These experiences are marked by a high level of realism and detail, with dreamers navigating their surroundings and their house and engaging in routine activities as if they were waking up in reality, such as, you know, getting up, brushing your teeth, getting in the shower, whatever, and then you wake up again to realize that that was all a dream. The vivid nature of false awakenings often makes it challenging to distinguish the dream state from actual wakefulness. One distinctive feature of false awakenings is the awareness and consciousness that accompanies them, such as a lucid dream. Dreamers are fully convinced that they have successfully woken up and proceeded with their morning routine, only to later discover that they were still immersed in a dream. The recurrence of false awakenings, where individuals believe that they have repeatedly woken up, contributes to a sense of obvious confusion and disorientation. Emotionally, false awakenings can elicit a range of feelings, including surprise, frustration, and occasional anxiety. The abrupt realization that one is still dreaming after the belief of having awakened adds a layer of complexity to the dream experience. Furthermore, false awakenings may serve as a gateway to lucid dreamings, providing an opportunity for the dreamer to become aware of their dream state and, in some cases, exert control over the unfolding narrative, causing them to do something other than their normal thing because they can realize that it's a dream state and it's not real life, so they can do whatever they want because it's a lucid dream, but pretty scary nonetheless if you think you woke up, but it's just still a dream. Coma sleep. A coma represents a state of profound unconsciousness in which an individual is unresponsive to external stimuli and unable to wake up any under condition. This condition is typically triggered by severe brain injuries such as traumatic head injury, strokes, or conditions affecting the brain's function. One distinctive aspect of coma sleep is the absence of the typical sleep patterns observed in conscious individuals. Unlike the normal sleep-wake cycle with distinct stages and cycles, Individuals in a coma do not experience the characteristic sleep stages because they're not sleeping. They're kind of just knocked out in a sense. Comatose individuals are closely monitored in a medical setting to assess the vital signs, brain activity, and other parameters critical for providing appropriate medical care and support. The duration of coma can vary widely, ranging from relatively short periods to more extended phases, such as, you know, a few days to a few years. The underlying causes of comas are often serious medical conditions or injuries affecting the brain, encompassing traumatic brain injuries, strokes, infections, and metabolitic disorders. Coma recovery is a complex and unpredictable process. Some individuals gradually emerge from a coma, transitioning to a state of reduced consciousness known as the vegetative state or minimally conscious state. The recovery trajectory varies widely among individuals, and the degree of recovery is influenced by factors such as underlying cause of the coma and the extent of the brain damage. Tier 5. Dreams about pyramids and ancient debris. Dreams featuring pyramids and other ancient debris weave a tapestry of weird symbolism and potential meanings. The iconic pyramids with their historical and cultural significance often serve as a powerful symbol in the realm of dreams. One interpretation may link them to stability and strength, suggesting a subconscious desire for a solid foundation in waking life or a belief in personal resilience. The dream might be urging you to build a stable and enduring structure for your goals and aberrations. So kind of interesting how your subconscious picks up on these things and that your dreams actually sometimes have meaning that you never knew about and that could greatly improve your life. Something I never knew before making this video, but pretty interesting. Melatonin Dreams Melatonin itself doesn't directly induce dreams. Its influence on sleep patterns can affect the nature of your dream experiences, although. When used as a supplement to improve your sleep quality, melatonin may contribute to more vivid and memorable dreams. Dreams typically occur during REM sleep, and melatonin's impact on sleep architecture can greatly influence the frequency and the intensity of dream experiences. 
tea break dreams or tolerance break dreams and taking a tolerance break from substances like cannabis can lead to notable changes in your dream experiences. Cannabis is known to suppress REM sleep, a phase associated with vivid dreaming. As one refrains from cannabis use during a tea break, a rebound effect may occur resulting in an increase in REM sleep. This heightened REM activity often contributes to more intense and memorable dreams. During a tea break, individuals frequently report an enhanced ability to recall their dreams. Cannabis use can diminish dream recall, so abstaining from its consumption can lead to increased awareness and retention of dream content. So basically, your body has been kind of waiting to release all of your kind of dreams of some sort, if that's a good way to think of it. But if while under the influence of cannabis for an extended amount of time, your body is still waiting to release all of that kind of dream juice to an extent. So when you finally take up tolerance break, it will just release it all kind of at one time or in big loads, and you'll just see a lot more vivid dreams after your tolerance break. Technology almost never works in dreams. The recurrent theme of technology frequently failing to work as expected in dreams can be attributed to several different factors inherent to the dreaming experience. Dreams by nature follow an inconsistent and unique logic that doesn't faithfully replicate the intrinsic details and functions of technology or reality. The brain responsible for dream creation may not fully recreate the specific features, the specific buttons, or functionalities of devices found in waking reality. Moreover, dreams often prioritize emotional content, narrative, and symbolic representation over the meticulous recreation of technological details, and it's hard for your brain to kind of do that to any extent. The malfunctioning of technology in dreams may serve actually, instead of just technology not working, but as a symbolic representation of broader emotions, fears, or uncertainties in your life, such as the feelings of loss of control, frustration, or anxiety. Dreams operate in a realm where the mind is somewhat disconnected from the constraints of reality. Exploding Head Syndrome is an unusual sleep phenomenon characterized by the perception of loud, often explosive sounds during the transition between wakefulness and sleep. Despite its alarming name, EHS or Exploding Head Syndrome is not accompanied by any sort of pain or actual physical harm. Thank God there isn't a syndrome out there that just, you know, explodes your head. But any episodes are usually typically brief, lasting only a few seconds, but it can be really scary for the person experiencing it. The auditory hallucinations resembling explosions, gunshots, or thunder occur most commonly during the onset of sleep or upon waking. It is considered a pretty rare phenomenon, with a higher prevalence in women and individuals over the age of 50. The exact cause of EHS still remains unclear, but it may be linked to factors such as stress, fatigue, and changes in your sleep pattern. Episodes tend to be more prevalent during periods of sleep deprivation. While EHS may be startling, it is generally benign, with no associated health risks, but it will just scare the hell out of you. Diagnosing EHS is based on the characteristic symptoms reported by individuals, and there are no specific tests for this identification, but it's pretty easy to tell if you have it because you'll just, you know, hear a gunshot or explosion right before you go to bed or right as you wake up. Hypnopompic hallucinations occurring during the transition from sleep to wakefulness are vivid and often unsettling sensory experiences. Taking place in the hypnopompic state, these hallucinations can encompass various sensory modalities, such as visual, auditory, and tactile sensations. The experiences are characterized by their realism, blurring the boundaries between dreams and waking reality. So this is kind of like dreaming, but you're kind of awake, but you're not really awake and you're not really dreaming. So just kind of like a a merge between those two in a blur. These hallucinations can involve a range of content from seeing people, animals, or objects to hearing voices, 
music, or other sounds. So once again, this can be pretty scary. Some individuals may also experience tactile sensations, feeling as if they are being touched. That's pretty creepy. The content of hypnopompic hallucinations can occasionally be frightening, involving a sense of impending danger, strange creatures around you or in your room, or threatening voices. So, not a fun experience nonetheless. While hypnopompic hallucinations can be associated with sleep disorders such as narcolepsy and sleep paralysis, they may also occur independently and randomly, which makes them almost more scary because, you know, you could go to sleep tonight and wake up surrounded by animals or people touching you. So, just hopefully that doesn't happen to any of you guys watching. But that's just crazy how stuff like this can happen just randomly with no real explanation. Tier 6 Dream Remote Viewing Dream Remote Viewing is a concept rooted in the idea of gaining information about distant or unseen targets through extrasensory perception, which is pretty interesting. I've seen this and studied this by myself quite a lot, and it's pretty interesting. And so this ESP within the dream state, it involves the perception of knowledge or insights beyond the ordinary senses, often resembling precognition or clairvoyance. While remote viewing typically refers to the conscious attempt to gather information about distant targets, dream remote viewing expands this phenomenon into the realm of dreams. In the context of dream remote viewing, individuals may report experiences of accessing information about future events or distant locations while dreaming precognitive dreams wherein dream content aligns with later real world occurrences are closely associated with this concept the interpretation of such dreams often involves deciphering symbolic representations as dreams are known for their symbolic and metaphorical nature but other than that most of the time it's just actually a coincidence that these things happen and sometimes people can get pretty lucky and keep getting these coincidences over and over and over again and so they think they can see into the future or get information about something while they're not even remotely close to that area about knowing that. And so pretty interesting. But my personal opinion, I think it's just a coincidence whenever this stuff happens. Fever dreams. Fever dreams, characterized by vivid and often bizarre dream experiences, occur during episodes of alleviated body temperature usually associated with infections. The impact of fever on the brain's neurotransmitters and overall activity can lead to heightened dream intensity. Dehydration, often accompanying fever, may also contribute to the alterations in the dream content. The disrupted sleep patterns during a fever with more frequent awakenings increase the likelihood of remembering dreams, especially if waking occurs during or shortly after the dream. The content of fever dreams tends to be surreal, emotionally charged, and sometimes hallucinatory. The Gray Man so I couldn't find anything very specific or any sort of definitions for the gray man, but I did find this very interesting Reddit story. I know how people feel about Reddit stories and how they say they're fake and stuff, but I found this interesting, so I'll go ahead and read it. And this is pretty long, but just bear with me. It's interesting. Okay, so this is a man's first first hand experience of experience with a gray man. So let's go on. Okay. I'm really starting to get freaked out. Hopefully someone on here has some idea of what might be going on and can offer some advice. I feel like I'm going crazy. My husband and I moved into a new apartment two weeks ago. It's a newish building. I don't know the exact age, but my guess is that it's 15 years old at most. It's the kind of place that young couples and families live in, or groups of friends who combine rent while going to school. It's located near another apartment complexes in another college town. Nothing seems out of the ordinary with the place and I don't know that it has a history. We bought up the rest of someone else's contract because they were moving out of town for work, but they seemed to be sad to leave this place. So I don't think they had any weird experiences or anything, but I found something weird since moving here. Although it's mostly been these undefinable things, it's not the kind of lights turn on and off type of spooky, more like the I'm slowly losing my mind kind. 
It started when we were moving in our stuff. I'm afraid of dogs, and I was carrying in some boxes. I saw the shadow or something that reminded me of a dog, but it turned out to be nothing. That kept happening during the first week or so, so I'd think I'd seen something, or someone, but nothing was there. No big deal, right? But it was weird, because that doesn't usually happen to me. I've also had nightmares every single night since we moved in. I was prone to having them occasionally before, but not like this, nor with such extreme regularity. I try not to think about them too much, so a lot of the content is forgotten. I know that there's death, murder, S-word, being followed, getting attacked, etc. though, so not a good thing. My husband leaves for work very early, and I've been mostly working from home lately, so I'm usually alone when I wake up the second time, the first being when he gets up, and until he gets home in the afternoon. I get really freaked out by noises though. I keep thinking someone is in our apartment. I'm pretty sure most of the noises are coming from the tenants and neighboring units, but it feels like they're coming from other rooms in our place because I kept locking myself in the bathroom to feel safer. My husband finally installed a lock in our bedroom. I keep thinking someone's going to come in and attack me. What finally pushed me to reach out and see if you or you guys have any ideas what happened this morning. My husband went to work as usual and I fell back to sleep. I started having nightmares again, then suddenly, I woke up and couldn't move. I've had sleep paralysis before maybe two or three times in my life, but the last time was when I was maybe 14, so about 10 years ago. What made this time different was that I was actually hallucinating, if that's what it was. This tall, gray man was standing right next to me, next to my bed. I was sure he was about to hurt me. All those noises I've heard, the perpetrator that was out to get me, the content of my bad dreams, this was it. This guy was going to hurt me and probably kill me. I tried to move, but I couldn't. I was convinced that if I could just get up and get out of the room, I'd be able to run away because he didn't know I was awake yet. So maybe I'd take him by surprise, but he noticed me. When I've had sleep paralysis before, I got out of it in maybe three minutes, but this went on for what felt like hours, but was probably closer to 15 minutes. I finally just fell asleep again because I couldn't ever wake up enough to do anything but move my eyes slightly, no matter how hard I fought. This is all very uncharacteristic for me. I don't get scared by anything paranormal or supernatural. I had a horror movie phase a couple years ago where I tried to find any movie that could scare me if I was lucky. One in ten movies made me jump once. I eventually gave up. I read no slash no sleep maybe once every two weeks. But it's all fun and games and I don't actually take any of it very seriously. Now, if this is all up to an overactive imagination or something, then it will go away. Or at least, I'm not in any real danger. But if this is something supernatural, what do I do? What do you think is going on? What can I do to make it stop? Is it just going to get getting worse? Alright, that was the Reddit story, but I think it did a good job at showing how creepy sleep paralysis can be in this so-called gray man. But as I've done a little bit more research, it says that most of the time, this quote, gray man, is just something that happens somewhat common during sleep paralysis, but terrifying nonetheless. Shadow People Shadow people, a paranormal phenomenon also kind of related to the last entry, are often described as dark, shadowy figures with a humanoid appearance. Witnesses recount encounters with these entities as fleeting and unsettling experiences. The figures are typically perceived in peripheral vision, characterized by a dark and featureless silhouette resembling a person. Reports commonly involve rapid movements and instances where the entities seem to vanish or dart out of sight when directly observed. Encounters often occur in low light conditions or during the night, and some individuals describe feeling a sense of dread or fear during these experiences. Randy Gardner Sleep Deprivation Experiment the Randy Gardner sleep deprivation experiment is a well-known case study that took place in 1964, involving a high school student named Randy Gardner. The experiment was conducted as a science fair project with the assistance of two Stanford University researchers, 
William Detman, and Jack D. Broughton. Randy Gardner, at the age of 17, decided to test the limits of human wakefulness by staying awake as long as possible. The experiment took place over a total of 11 days, from December 28, 1963 to January 8, 1964. Gardner's goal was to break the existing record for sleep deprivation, which was set at 260 hours, which was approximately 11 days at the time. Throughout the experiment, Gardner was monitored by researchers, and his physical and psychological condition was documented. The study attracted significant attention, and Gardner's experience provided valuable insights into the effects of prolonged sleep deprivation. As the experiment progressed, Gardner experienced various symptoms of sleep deprivation, including irritability, mood swings, impaired concentration, and lapses in memory. His cognitive abilities and motor skills also deteriorated. Towards the end of the experiment, he started to exhibit signs of paranoia and hallucinations. After 11 days without sleep, Gardner finally allowed himself to sleep. Remarkably, he slept for 14 hours and 40 minutes straight, and upon waking, he reported feeling well-rested and alert. Despite the extreme nature of the experiment, Gardner did not suffer any long-term negative effects in his body and mind seemed to recover relatively quickly. Fatal Insomnia Fatal insomnia is an extremely rare and progressive neurodegenerative disorder that leads to severe sleep disruption and ultimately death. This disorder is part of a group of diseases known as prion diseases, which involve the misfolding of protons in the brain. The condition is characterized by the gradual and irreversible deterioration of the thalamus, a region of the brain that plays a crucial role in regulating sleep. As the disorder progresses, individuals experience increasing insomnia, leading to complete inability to sleep. Apart from insomnia, symptoms may include weight loss, hallucinations, and other psychiatric symptoms. Cognitive functions also decline, and individuals may experience difficulty with coordination and movement. The name fatal insomnia reflects the grim prognosis associated with the disorder. The progression is relentless, and individuals affected by the condition typically succumb to it within a year or two symptom onset. Tier 7. Klein-Levin Syndrome or KLS, commonly known as Sleeping Beauty Syndrome, is a rare neurological disorder characterized by recurring episodes of excessive sleep, accompanied by cognitive and behavioral changes. Individuals with KLS may enter episodes during which they sleep for abnormally extended periods, sometimes up to 20 hours a day, and these episodes can persist for days, weeks, or even months, sleeping away almost months out of their life. Alongside excessive sleep, affected individuals may exhibit cognitive symptoms like confusion and disorientation, as well as behavioral changes such as irritability, mood swings, hyperphagia, which is increased appetite and compulsive eating, and in some cases, hypersexuality. Visual or auditory hallucinations may also occur, primarily impacting adolescents and young adults. The exact cause of KLS remains uncertain. Nicotine Patches Dreams Nicotine Patches Dreams, commonly employed in smoking concession programs to help individuals quit smoking, release a controlled dose of nicotine through the skin, aiding in the gradual reduction of nicotine dependence. While generally associated with a lower risk of adverse effects compared to smoking, some users have reported experiencing vivid and unusual dreams when using nicotine patches. The exact reasons for this phenomenon are not entirely clear, but potential explanations include nicotine's impact on sleep architecture, acting as a stimulant that may influence the REM stage where vivid dreaming occurs. Additionally, withdrawal symptoms during nicotine reduction as part of smoking cessation could contribute to changes in your sleep pattern and the overall dream experiences. Childhood Memory Dreams Childhood memory dreams are a manifestation of the mind's ability to draw upon recollections, impressions, and emotions and memories from early years during the dream state. These dreams may involve relieving specific moments, interacting with past figures, or incorporating elements significant during your childhood. The emotional weight associated with childhood events often contributes to the potency of these dreams. 
Revisiting memories during dreams can serve various different purposes, including emotional processing, resolution of unresolved issues, and a sense of comfort or escape through nostalgia. PTSD nightmares, or post-traumatic stress disorder nightmares, are a prevalent and pretty distressing symptom experienced by individuals who have undergone traumatic events. PTSD, arising from exposure to life-threatening experiences like combat, assault, or accidents, often manifests through vivid and recurrent nightmares. These nightmares involve distressing reenactments of the traumatic event, contributing to the persistent sense of distress and emotional turmoil. Flashbacks, wherein individuals feel as they are reliving the trauma, can be triggered by these nightmares, accompanied by physical and emotional reactions reminiscent of the original trauma. The impact of PTSD nightmares extends beyond just the dream state, affecting overall sleep quality and contributing to sleep disturbances like insomnia. Tier 8 trapped in a dream and this is most likely referring to just sleep paralysis which is what we've talked about before but it's a phenomenon involving temporary immobility during the transition between sleep and wakefulness and it can evoke a feeling of being confined or trapped and these hallucinations that go along with it could be the idea of being trapped in a dream the man who never slept otherwise known as al herpin was an American known for his claim of having lived an extraordinary long life without sleep. Herpin asserted that he had not slept for decades, and this assertion gained attention, making him a notable figure in discussions about sleep and human psychology. Herpin's life and his claim of perpetual wakefulness attracted public interest, and he became known as the man who never slept or the marvelous man who does not sleep. However, his claims were met with skepticism, and there's any limited scientific documentation or validation of his sleep patterns, so he could just have made that up and was lying about it. And alright, that wraps up the sleep and dream iceberg. I really hope you enjoy because I enjoyed talking about it and researching it and writing the script. And if you did notice, I did skip a few in here because I've recently been told by YouTube that I shouldn't be talking about kind of more conspiracy stuff like that and uh i'll continue not to talk about conspiracies and stuff like that and so if you saw i skipped any they are most likely related to conspiracies or drugs or stuff like that which i just don't want to touch on in my videos because i don't want to get in trouble and all right thank you guys for watching like and subscribe we're almost to 100,000 subscribers and anyways see you next time